hard, long labor, mm -hmm. because we know that, so I'm not going to crush that part. Recent videos released by the Center for Medical Progress reveal Planned Parenthood's inhumane treatment of unborn children and its executives negotiating the sale of baby hearts, lungs, and livers. And another boy, another boy, boy. How did we get to this point? To understand present-day Planned Parenthood, we should understand Margaret Sanger, Planned Parenthood's founder and hero. Margaret Sanger was a big proponent of negative eugenics, which was the viewpoint that you should weed out unfit people from the bloodline. So that would be encouraging people not to procreate if they were unfit, feeble-minded, had any kind of mental illness, and that also included forced sterilization. Words like unfit and feeble-minded were used to describe not only the poor and mentally ill, but also to describe African Americans. Margaret Singer stated that birth control is nothing more or less than the facilitation of the process of weeding out the unfit, of preventing the birth of defectives or of those who will become defectives. In 1921, Margaret Sanger founded the American Birth Control League. Its primary mission was to prevent uncontrolled procreation and establish a world program of birth control. She states, knowledge of birth control is essentially moral. Its general, though prudent practice, must lead to a higher individuality and ultimately to a cleaner race. Margaret Sanger stated that the most merciful thing that the large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. In 1939, Sanger wrote a letter to her eugenics colleague, Dr. Clarence Gamble, a member of the Birth Control Federation of America, in regards to setting up the Negro Project, a birth control clinic for African Americans. She was speaking about serving what she called the Negro population, and in concluding this portion of the letter, she stated that, we do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population and the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. Sanger believed that having an African-American minister on staff would ease the suspicion. African-American populations were considered some of these unfit members that should be weeded out. So in this letter, she discusses having African-Americans serve other African-Americans so they wouldn't be aware that they were seeking to terminate them, to exterminate them by the use of birth control and negative eugenics. Sanger was quite fond of Dr. Ernst Rudin's work, director for the Society for Racial Hygiene. He would later go on to write Nazi Germany's sterilization laws. In 1933, she published his article, Eugenic Sterilization, An Urgent Need, which promoted programs to eliminate the unfit in order to create a super race. In the late 1930s and 40s, knowledge of Nazi atrocities made words like eugenics and population control unpopular in America. So in 1942, to distance itself in name, Margaret Sanger's American Birth Control League became Planned Parenthood. They weren't just being established in the U.S. It was global. A grim fact in American history was the forced sterilization of women in Puerto Rico. In 1936, sterilization programs spearheaded by the International Planned Parenthood Federation with funding from the U.S. government sterilized one-third of Puerto Rican women by 1968, making it the highest proportion of childbearing aged persons sterilized in the world. And today... Planned Parenthood facilities are generally located in low-income areas which are heavily populated with minorities, and a lot of times they seek to reach those minorities to help them with reproductive rights, they say, with birth control and largely abortion. Independent studies have concluded that nearly 80 percent of Planned Parenthood facilities are set up in minority communities. It's no wonder abortion is the leading cause of death among African Americans, higher than all other causes combined. Mounting evidence against Planned Parenthood's beginning to today continues to fuel public outcry. The American people should seek to immediately defund Planned Parenthood so that our own tax dollars don't go to support this organization who has been exposed to be lying to the American people for many years for committing these egregious acts against the youngest children among us. They should be immediately defunded.